Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Driver Spotlight. Today, we're going to be traveling out to Arvada, Colorado, where we find 17-year-old Race Face Advancement Driver, Cassidy Hines. Cassidy, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. How are you, Rod? I'm doing great. I know that you just got back from um, the turkey shoot, but... What's the weather like there in Colorado? Is it cold? Yeah, it's pretty cold. I think this week we're in like the 30s and 40s. Well, when you think of Colorado, I'm thinking about like frigid weather. That's not that bad. It's like 50 something. Actually, it's going to get down to 39 degrees here in Florida. Now, for us Floridians, we're kind of wimpy when it comes to cold weather. That's really cold. Yeah, that's like fall for us. So I, I, I have another question for you. Um, I know that there was a lot of fires out in Colorado this year. Were any, did any of those kind of get close to you? Um, there were, I don't, they didn't necessarily get like super close to us, but they were within, I think like 60 miles of us. So they were somewhat close, but not super close. It was the smoke kind of getting your way though? Did, did it kind of travel over that way? Yeah, it was really bad. It, you walked outside and it smelled like there was a fire right next to you. Uh, oh my gosh. Well, let's let's talk a little bit of racing. So for any of you that do not follow Cassidy, here's what all she does. She races legend cars. She races pro trucks. She races junior late models. She races pro late models. Um, four different cars in one season. How did you handle all of that, Cassidy? It was difficult. It was very difficult. <laughs> um, I mean, the pro late model and the junior late model, we didn't run at the same time because we'd have like, I think I ran three pro late model races this year and then the rest were all junior late model races. So that was pretty easy to handle. And then for the pro truck and the legend, we were pretty much pulling double duty every weekend with those because we'd have um, both the legend and the pro truck on the same night plus like two or three mains that we had to run so that was it was really mentally and physically challenging to do right so let's talk about the legend card first and, and I don't want to get into a lot of details but share with the viewers what you learn in the legend car that you can carry over to the full-size race cars that's a tough one I mean the legend cars are definitely very different from the pro truck and the late models because they're smaller and they're a lot squirrelier than the late models and the pro trucks are. So, but I think that had a lot to do with me being able to drive the pro truck and the late model. I was able to handle the squirreliness if it got squirrely. So I think that carried over a lot. So I got to ask this question. This is blindside you a little bit. What kind of bad habits is easy to carry from a legend car into a full-size car? Mm. Um, I'm trying to think. I'd say, I don't know. They're kind of, so the way that I think of legends is they're cockroaches. They <laughs> just, they're all together and then they scatter once the green flag drops. So. Uh that's definitely, I mean, that could be a bad habit is, I mean, because with the pro truck, you can't be a cockroach. You, okay. have to be, <laughs> you have to, you have to stay together. You can't really like scatter everywhere. You well, can't. isn't, isn't the legend car like, besides being a cockroach, um, isn't, isn't, that would make a great sponsor next year. You just put raid on your car. With like a big spray nozzle on top. But isn't the legend car, I mean, don't you, aren't you like on the gas, off the gas, a lot harder braking, being able to drive it in deeper, get back on the brakes. And it seems to me like those would be things that you can't do with the other two cars. Yeah, that, I mean, that could be a bad habit that I could get. I didn't really find that problem, but I think mm -hmm. some other people did where, They'd go to if, because there were a few people that drove Pro Trucks and Legends on the same night, and 
I think maybe they would like go to run the pro truck like they'd run the legend and they'd run it in hard, but then realize, oh, you can't do that. <laughs> okay, so let's switch now, now that we're past the, the cockroaches. Um, let's now switch to the pro truck and you, you kind of set a record. You became the first female to win a truck race at Colorado National. I mean, how exciting was that? It was very exciting. I mean, I don't know. I think my second win in the pro truck was more exciting than the first win because the first win, I mean, yeah, it was exciting because I got my first win, but it was like, I didn't have that much of a gap on second place. Whereas with the second win, I was like a quarter of a straightaway ahead of them, half a straightaway ahead of them. So, I mean, I think the second win was definitely more exciting than that one, but it was all pretty exciting. Yeah. So let's talk about how your competitors accepted that. And it's not only that you're, you know, you're 17 years old and you want a pro truck race, but you're a female and you want a pro truck race. So how did the, how did the guys kind of react to that? It depended on the person. There were a few of the drivers that didn't necessarily like it. But then there were like the rest of them that came up to me in tech and were like, that was a really good race, like good job. That was really good, congrats. But I mean, I guess it just depended on the driver and like which one was more, I guess, professional about it. Yeah. Is it so I would think that maybe some of the younger guys would be a little bit jealous to where as maybe some of the older, more seasoned racers would be like, hey, this is really good. Congratulations. And, you know, the cool thing about it, it's really good for the sport as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly how it was. It was the older guys were more congratulating than the younger guys. Yeah. All right. So now let's switch and let's talk about the junior late model. First of all, you were running with one of the best teams in the country. Uh, with with Mike Nake and the Nate Clara Motorsports team. What was that like? Um, Nate Clara Motorsports is amazing. They're awesome. And it was really fun driving with them and getting to know the other drivers, Jake Bullman and Joey East. And then at the turkey shoot, we had Grant Thompson with us. So that was really fun. So tell us something funny about one of your other teammates. Get a chance to kind of throw one of them under the bus a little bit. Anything that stood out during the year? I know the first day, the first time that we were out there, uh, when we came out for the first junior late model race of the year, which we didn't get a race. I mean, we were already there, ready to go, and then didn't get a race. It was kind of like trying to get Joey to stand next to you was almost like impossible. But did you guys eventually kind of warm up to each other after the season? A little bit. A little. Not, <laughs> not much, but a little bit. We, he's very quiet. And... Mike and the rest of the team, they like to give him a hard time because like we'll be looking at race monitor, trying to figure out our times and see where everybody's at. And he'll be looking at his phone and they'll just like randomly walk up to him and be like, Joey, why are you texting your girlfriend? And he'll get so embarrassed. <laughs> I think that was one of the only, that was like, yeah, that was, Pretty much what they did all season. Well, you know, Joey does have a sense of humor. Um, you just got to kind of dig for it a little bit. I had somebody tell me that they were flying with um, with them on, 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 a, on a small trip. I think they were going from Madeira maybe to Vegas in, in Joey's dad's plane. And, and they said they were getting something out of the vending machine. And Joey walked up to him and said, make a good selection because this might be your last meal. And then just turned and kept on walking. So... He does have a sense of humor. How about Jake Bowman? What was it like racing with Jake all year? It was good. He was he was shy at the beginning of the year too, but he warmed up a lot more than Joey did. But I think Joey's just more quiet than Jake yeah. is. But it was good. Okay, and then you kind of throw Grant into the mix, and that kind of throws all the other stuff out the door because he's about 900 miles an hour. Um, and I know that you only got to run with Grant really – only this weekend, this, this past weekend at the turkey shoot. What was that like? It was fun. Grant is, he's a lively driver. He is definitely, I don't know how to explain it. He just, 
he makes jokes and he he talks to everybody. Like he doesn't see the bad at the racetrack. He sees the good. Well, wow, that's cool. And um, so let's talk a little bit about your your first season there. Um, here's what I want everybody to understand that, um, you know, this is the fourth, I think the fourth season for the junior late model, maybe the fifth season for them. And without a doubt, not even close, this was the most stacked year uh, for everybody. And not only just the quality of the drivers, but I think the other race teams kind of stepped up their game as well. They got a lot better at, at, at understanding what the junior late model cars were all about. So it was a pretty tough season out there this year. Um, is there any particular race that kind of stands out to you uh, as being maybe better than another particular race? Um, I'd say the last Madeira race that I ran. I don't remember the exact date of it, but I'd say that one was my best one because one, I didn't get wrecked out <laughs> and um, I finished the race, so that was good, and in that race, I finished fourth, but then the results came back that I finished third because another driver got DQ'd, so, I mean, that was a good finish, but that one stood out the most to me because, like, I kept, I don't know, on the restarts, I'd go back a few cars, but then I'd gain positions more, so it just, like, it kept, it kept going in a cycle for that race that, I would I was gaining the positions and not wrecking or getting wrecked or anything like that. Yeah. And and I know that what a lot of people don't understand is that that junior late model series there at Madeira, these are the best young drivers in the country. This is where everybody wants to come and race. Um, and I know that this was particularly a tough year because of COVID. You know, no fans in the stands out there. Like I said, the first race was canceled. Then we went about three and a half, almost four months. We didn't get a race at all. So it was, it was definitely a learning thing. What was the most difficult part of racing with all the different COVID uh, restrictions and everything that was put into place? Um, I'd have to say the mask. <laughs> with you there. <laughs> The masks at Madeira in like 105 degree weather was awful because for the entire season until maybe the last two races, we had to wear our masks in our pit areas. And so we didn't get a break from them. So that was, was really difficult. So not only having to spend all that time in the airport in a mask and then on the plane in a mask, and then when you get there, you got to be in a mask and then, you know, and even the, the couple times that I was out at Madeira this year, um, you know, a lot of the restaurants weren't open. I mean, it was just seems like every place you went was, for me, Cassidy, I almost, when there, there are times, even today, when I go out, I feel like, am I actually in the United States or am I in some foreign country someplace? It's really yeah. kind of scary. Yeah, it is. It's really scary. Yeah. And I don't know, I hope <laughs> it gets home here soon. Well, let's hope so. Um, so let's talk about this past weekend. So some of the top junior late model drivers in the country all got together down at Tucson Speedway for the first annual turkey shoot. And you were there in what we were calling, um, what's a nice name for your paint scheme that was on your car? Because you all are looking at it right now on the screen, but this car was awesome. And I think that Mike Nate called you, what was the guy's name? Uh, Austin, Austin Powers. Powers. The Austin Powers car, because it looked like the plane that was in one of those movies, I don't know. But I thought the Friends of Jacqueline car was smoking hot, man. And so let's talk about it. I mean, you got there, you were fast, right out of the box. You were fast all weekend. What was it like running that turkey shoot? And what did you take away from that race? It was... It was fun. I liked the turkey shoot. I liked Tucson Speedway. It was a really fun track, but it was rough on tires. It ate them up. And so I really, I had to figure out how to save my tires because I've never really been to a track where I really had to save my tires like that. 
So that was definitely the biggest learning experience I had was um, figuring out how to save my tires so I could be able to um, run hard at the end of the race, whereas most of them were trying to run at hard at the beginning of the race, and then none of them had tire left. So, I mean, I had tire left, so that was good, but. I talked I talked to Mike right before we, we did this interview and he, he said they were just had gotten back or unloading the cars and he goes, you know, if that race would have probably had another 10, 15 laps, Cassidy might have been the one to beat because her tires were definitely, without a doubt, in the best condition than any of the other Nate Cloward cars. And I know that doesn't sound maybe that important to a lot of people, but let me tell you what, when you get into these longer races, um, tire management is key. There's a there's a late model racer out there. His name is Bubba Pollard, and Bubba Pollard has learned how to manage tires probably better than anybody on the planet, and that's why he's won like 170 plus late model races around the country. So the fact that you're able to do that at your age right now, I think, is a major plus for you moving forward. And talking about moving forward, can you give us a little peek into what the 2021 season is going to look like for Cassidy Hines? Yeah, so we're not certain about the pro truck yet. We know we're going to maybe do a few races when we're home, but we don't know if the schedules are going to line up yet because nobody's sent out schedules. But we do know that we're going to be racing the Traveling Pro Series with the SRL Series. So we're going to be going to all of those races with Nate Clara Motorsports. And then we might be hitting a few late model races on the East Coast, but we don't know for sure yet. Awesome. That sounds like a great plan to me. So let's take Cassidy off track for just a couple minutes. And let's talk about your involvement with the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation. Um, you were one of the first race-based drivers to actually adopt a child through that. What's it been like to be a part of that uh, a part of that cause. And for the, those of you that do not know what Friends of Jacqueline is, it's an organization um, that's a 501c3 that helps kids and families that are battling pediatric cancer. So what does that, what does that mean to you, Cassidy? Um, it means a lot, honestly. I, I love my adoptees, London and Alea, and I love their family. They're amazing. Um, London is super inspiring for me, and I'm sure she could be for everybody else if they would get to know her. Um, she has two different types of cancers, so that's pretty difficult to have as a six-year-old, and she inspires me because she keeps fighting for her life every day, and I don't know, it's, it's awesome. I love being a part of Friends of Jacqueline. So I want you to think about this for a minute, you know, not only is Cassidy racing in a, in a man's world, basically, I mean, it is what it is, but she's racing all these different types of cars. So the Legend, the Pro Truck, the Junior Late Model, the Pro Late Model, um, competing in both her area and on the West Coast. She's a part of Friends of Jacqueline, but she went above and beyond because she didn't adopt just one, she adopted two kids and has been taking care of them. And then you decided that you wanted to be a politician. And so you ran for student council president. And what were the results there? I won. She won. Got... <laughs> now you've been in student council for, for many, for, you know, ever since basically you've been at the high school level. Is that not true? Yeah, I've been in student council all four years and I ran for sophomore president and junior president, but the guy that ran against me won every time. So I ran for student body and he ran against me, but I ended up beating him. So the one that I won count. The one that you won counted. All right. So I know we talked a little bit about this, but when you look at everything that you're doing and, and come on, I mean, you, you're an honor student. So you're balancing the racing what you're doing for Friends of Jacqueline, student council president, how does Cassidy balance all this? And do you have somebody that's helping you? Or do you, do you have a secret that you could share with everybody on how you're able to pull this off? Um, no secret, just drowning myself with school. But <laughs> um, my mom helps me a lot with that though. 
because she tries to keep me on track with all of my schoolwork and like she checks like if I'm missing something even if I know I'm missing it or if I haven't gotten around to doing it or if a teacher hasn't graded it yet so she keeps me on track with that and makes sure that um I have done all of that stuff so so I got to ask a question about your mom does she take as many pictures around the house as she does at the track no okay <laughs> let me tell you something her mom Molly is awesome she's been great for all the race face drivers this year she is she's like my um gosh she, she's almost like the photographer that i wish i could be or wish that we had she does an awesome job i don't know how many hundreds of pictures she took during the, sh the shootout but but molly i know you're watching thank you so much for everything that you do for all of the drivers and um you know i just wanted to say one thing cassidy and that is that I am without a doubt a true Cassidy Hines fan, 100%. And if you're a potential sponsor out there and you're looking for a young female that's a fighter, that's a good race car driver, she's pretty, she's got it all, you need to contact me by going to Cassidy's website and just hit the contact button. And if you're there as a fan, make sure to sign up for her digital newsletter. Make sure to follow her on social media. It's CassidyHinesRacing.com. Cassidy, you want to give a shout out to any of your sponsors? Yes, I would like to thank Frontier Restoration, SunWest Services, Race Based Brand Development, Make Clower Motorsports, um, Impacted Wraps and Graphics, MTFX Graphics, Ducks Unlimited, and LL Acousticals and the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation. All right, Cassidy, thank you so much for being with us this evening and good luck in 2021. We're gonna be looking forward to following you. I think you're gonna have an amazing year. And again, for all of you fans that are watching, you can get caught up on any shows that you might have missed, whether they're Race Face Driver Updates and or Race Face Spotlights at raceface.tv on demand. Again, my name is Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching, and Cassidy, thank you for being with us this evening. Thank you. Good night, everybody.